very welcome to the fifth uh, episode of uh, Hockey Fever's uh, series Power Break with Dave. And my name is David. Uh, and today I have a new guest that are a really great hockey player. And he's from Canada. And now he plays in Austria this season for uh, the Innsbruck, uh, the Haie. I think I pronounced it right. And the name uh, of the player is Jamal Watson. Very, very welcome. No, thanks for having me. And uh, you did a good job, Dehaya. I, I even couldn't even say it when I first got here. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I trained a little bit before, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, is everything fine with you? Yeah, everything's good. Um, yeah. uh, kind of have a break in the schedule right now. We get a week off. We don't play till Sunday, so... It's nice to have a practice week because I that last uh, all through January and December it was games after games after games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand. And uh, for those of you that don't uh, know so much of the uh, uh, team that Jamal plays for, as I said, you play for the Innsbruck, uh, the Haie, and uh, for the moment you are placed, I think, third in the league uh, behind Salzburg and. Uh, Bol, uh, Bos Bolsano, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, you have had, as I think, a really great uh, season so far overall as a team, of course, uh, as you have placed yourself in the top section of the table. And uh, for your sake, you have, I think, done uh, nine goals and 17 assists so far. So a really good pr production for you as well, uh, specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, been, how would uh, you? Good. Yeah. How would you uh, say are your feelings together with your teammates of the season so far? I think uh, what we've done so far, um, we're happy with kind of the goal. Uh, we started off the year. The goal was to make playoffs, um, sitting around with everyone, and that was the initial goal. And then, kind of after all the success we've had um, throughout that first uh, two thirds of the season. Um, after we qualified for our spot in the top six, which was last week, I think the goal now is to finish high up in the table as we can. Um, we obviously, we have one more game against Red Bulls and we're three points or four points behind them. So we need to get a win against those guys and then do it. It's kind of in our own hands, um, but we want to finish top three so we can have as high as, as high seed as possible for that playoff spot. And then we can, uh, we can roll into playoffs playing um, at choosing a team that we want to play. Yeah that I can really understand. And for you, uh, it is the second year in Europe and uh, you had really have uh, had a really great start of my opinion. And what have been your impressions of the league, the highest league in Austria for uh, now when you have started playing so far? Uh, I, I really like here. Um, obviously Innsbruck reaching out, taking me from, uh, the United Kingdom last year, that's a risk on their part, but they gave me a shot and opportunity to play for a team like them. Um, I think like the league's been, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, there's so much talent here. Uh, there's a lot, there's guys from all over the world, obviously. And just alone on my team, I know we have the top scorer in Brady Shaw and we have uh, another top five guy in um, Adam Haluka that are just talented, talented hockey players. And the, the league in general, it's, it's good, it's fast um it's it's a great place where you can develop and you can really uh test yourself against some of the best europe has to offer and i think it's um a place where you i've, I've really added to my game this year um i'm not so much uh just an offensive guy i've been playing great having some good defense this year relied more on the peak penalty kill and stuff like that this year's really been like a growing year for me and uh um the ice hl has really helped me do that with the competition that we play every night yeah, and I think for my uh, opinion, from what I have seen, it's really exciting that the, the top league, the highest league as you play in, uh, have uh, uh, also not only uh, Austrian teams, they have also teams from Hungary, uh, Italy and um, Slovenia. Mm -hmm. So in that, uh, you also, uh, you're often uh, talking about different kinds of uh, traditional plays in certain types of leagues, but I think that's also helps all of the players 
to kind of learn more kind of different place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like when we we I came we got out from Slovenia this weekend and like Ljubljana is an unbelievable city uh, and you never kind of get experience that if like you didn't, if it was just an Austrian league. So it was really cool to go to the, all these different places and like Italy's close, um, Hungary's favor is like quite, it's, it's a far drive. It's definitely a long way away, but the, uh, when you go to those different places and see the different fans and different cultures kind of thing, it's really something to look back on. And I'm glad I got experience with it. Yeah, I can really understand it. And so the next question I have for you as an import in the league, uh, and I have seen on, on the website and looked on internet, uh, describe the feeling to go into uh, uh, the uh, Tyroler Wasserkraft Arena and meet the home fans in a home game um, and the atmosphere. It's, it's the support this year has been crazy. Um, like... I know at the start of the year, everyone was excited about how the team was going to do when we brought in, uh, the different players that we brought in. And then as of late, since we've been at the top of the table all year, it's been standing room only at games. It's been packed, loud, warm-ups. It's, it's loud. Um, they've added bleachers, an extra section to uh, help with all the fans. And everyone's just uh, um, having a great time right now, just watching the team helping us succeed. And when it's loud inside Innsbruck and things things are really rolling, the fan section is an unbelievable place to see. It's it's the drums are going, everyone's everyone's enjoying what's going on on the ice, and it really helps us with our game, like to keep momentum rolling forward and like the post game stuff as well. They're always so happy to see us after the game, and um, they're excited to see us succeed. And I we want to keep pushing that forward because kind of at the end of the year this year. We want to uh, show an appreciation for our fans for standing behind us and hopefully give them a long playoff run. I can really understand. And that also, of course, it gives you great fuel to uh, continue the great path that you have already uh, begun on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we know uh, we know the vendors support us. Um, we had a little bit of a tough stretch uh, the last little bit here, but the fans still coming out in droves and saying it's the next one, it's the next one, don't worry about it. And they've been real supportive, and I can't thank them for like all they've done this year. Mm, I can really understand, and I think what I've seen from the pictures, the the layout of the arena is really cool as well, with the uh, ceiling and everything. It it must be a great great sound in there. Yeah, it's an unbelievable sound, and like kind of the cool thing is they have uh, you can see outside, and they got the blinds up, but you can tell that the natural light and everything, like practicing during the day, is awesome, and then. When the light, when it's dark at night and the lights go on the ice, it, it's an unbelievable, uh, unbelievable looking arena. It's, it's the sound. It's, it's big, but it's not too big. Um, it fills out, so it feels like everything's on top of you. It's really packed. Yeah, really great. And uh, what you have uh, reached and accomplished so far is uh, because of your uh, focus and hard work and also great talent, of course. But uh, in a moment, as you are now, and still have um, a lot of things to accomplish still, but uh, you have done really great things. Have you taken your time to uh, think of what you have uh, been through in your career and what you actually have accomplished? I think definitely at the end of the year, um, the end of the season, every time you always take a look back and you kind of look at how you progressed and how things have like went along and I know uh, for me, especially this year, um, obviously the job's not finished yet. We want things to go, keep going on until April and we're lifting up that cup, but um, taking a back and look at like how the career's gone so far and um, like the success I had at Guilford last year and the success our team's having this year and everything kind of just falling in the right place. You got to look back and kind of just uh, enjoy the moment a little bit. Um, I know all through junior and stuff like that after it was finished it wasn't sure what you're going to do and then you go to university and you kind of see your career seeing your career path over the last 10 years and how it's like changed and how it's been shaped and how it's went along is I think uh my favorite part about it to see where my games come from and how I've improved like that's been my that's been my favorite thing to see so far and all the different places and people that I've met it's 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 a it's very what's the word for it it's very humbling to see like where i started from and then kind of to where i built myself up to and i want to keep climbing that mountain as high as it can go that i can really understand and 
as we speak now in Austria and also, uh, of course, I think in other places, you have become, as you are today, a professional ice hockey player, a great role model for many young uh, other uh, hockey fans and uh, others that play ice hockey. But as you uh, have reached this point uh, that you are now, uh, who did you have as a, uh, a role model that inspired you to be uh, a better ice hockey player and a person? I think uh, that all starts home with uh, my mom and my dad. They're they're two of the most hardworking um, blue collar people out there. They definitely uh, they've they've they worked for everything um, they've given me and uh, the opportunity. They've allowed me to kind of grow as a hockey player because of what they've done, uh, driving me to the rink every day, um, just making sure I'm having fun, making sure I have everything I need, and getting to this point was all part of them because they've offered so much support it was never it was never about um you have to do this as long as i'm enjoying it and what i want to do i think that's been the biggest part for me as um looking up to them is they've never pressed too hard they've always wanted me let me do what i want to do and it's allowed me to grow as a person and grow as a hockey player because they've been in my corner supporting me but they've also been uh they've also been the i would say the people that want to see you succeed the most but they're also there to pick you up when things aren't going well and then i think definitely more on the hockey side was uh our one of my first coaches from our uh young team uh in calgary we had a bunch of guys his name's pat ellenuck former nhler mm -hmm. um seeing the way he um practiced and forced and taught us how to compete and taught us how to as kids and you instilled that into you it showed how much he wanted to see everyone succeed and when you don't realize those things until you get older and you see how important it is to be a hard worker how hard it is to compete how hard it is to be get to the top of the mountain because there's people always climbing up he really mm -hmm. instilled that in us early and then when you hit this age now you realize you don't you took for granted at the time it was hard and like what those things meant but now it's an important thing that it kind of helps me add to that chip on my shoulder that makes me want to be the best athlete I can be. Mm, great, fantastic, and uh, I, it, it's really great to hear. So, what uh, so far, if you have to pick something, have been your proudest moment in your career so far? Uh, the proudest moment in my career, I think uh, I could separate into a few. Um, I guess my first one would be getting drafted to the WHL. That was one of the coolest things when you're a young kid. Um, seeing your name going up on a board, no matter how late or how early it is, um, getting to see that's always cool. Um, wearing the cap and seeing Lethbridge in my 19 year old year, that was really fun. Um, being recognized as a leader in uh, in in a, in a cutthroat, tough environment like that, like junior hockey. So it it really felt good to know that um, I knew what had what it would take to be uh, one of the 22 leaders in the league with a C on their chest. Um, Montreal Canadiens development camp. I remember going to that. That was a eye-opening experience to see like how NHLers um, live and how hard it is and how good you have to be to play in the NHL. That was an unbelievable experience. And then um, finishing my fifth year of university at uh, Mount Royal was unbelievable. Uh, playing on the hockey team there, getting a degree was something that really, really. Uh, made me happy and really uh showed like how much hard work and perseverance you can do into something and you can get a great outcome and i played hockey all the way through and finished a whole accounting degree which is um something that not many people can say they've done out there and then obviously my first pro contract over here in europe has been um over in guilford and then being able to continue on um just the ability to move over to europe has been um one of the best things i've ever had um, being able to see so many things and meet so many different people and experience a different side of the world, which was something I never thought would be possible, um, playing hockey in Canada and North America. And you kind of see when you're not playing there, the journey is ended. But if you open up your eyes and kind of pay attention, you can open up um, new avenues and you can enjoy places like Innsbruck, which is a beautiful place to be. Oh, that, it sounds great and really exciting. So I can really understand that, that you have many great uh, parts of your career so far and still many great to come yeah. uh, and 
as I understand and many others, uh, hockey is uh, your work and you are a professional and uh, an extreme huge part of your life. But if you have an absolutely free day, what is your choice, how to spend it and what do you uh, like to do then? So um, a free day, I would say, uh, depends the season, depends the year, I'd say uh here i'm a big video game guy i play uh i'm a video game on off days um i think it's a good way to kind of like take the seriousness out of things um you know with hockey's your job you're always it's almost a 24 7 thing right you gotta take care of yourself you gotta you have to be ready you have to practice you have to work out you have to eat correctly you have to do everything you can but on an off day just winding down playing some video games is one of my favorite things to do but i know uh when the season's done, I'm pretty active outside. Um, in Canada, I love riding my skateboard around um, in the winter time. Hopefully after the season's done here, there'll still be some snow. I could go snowboarding, but I'm a big activities outside guy with, uh, with my dog. Um, she's back home in Canada. She's going to the park, doing things with her, um, being outside and just um, hanging out down with friends is uh, also a great thing to do, but I definitely am a video game guy first when it comes to in season, but when things are a little less stressful, I'm, I'm definitely more of an outside person. Yeah. So a great mix of everything. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. And uh, for you as well, as I said before, uh, have accomplished so much, what would be if you have to give any sort of advice to younger uh, girls and boys that watch this or others that really want to uh, develop and, and, and uh, be greater hockey players, what would be your, do you have any certain advice that you want to give? I think the biggest advice or certainty of advice um, that I'd give to someone that's up and coming or someone that's um, climbing the ladder right now is you always want to try and be the hardest worker in the room. And you have to be ready to give 110%. If you're not ready to give 110%, that's the, I think you're not committed and you're not really into it. When you're, when you're fully committed and you're enjoying your time and you're having fun, you can really start to see the fruits of your labor and great results. And I think that's something that I've learned throughout was um, having talents enough, but you have to have the want and the will to push forward and want to better yourself and play against the best competition. And I think also my probably second biggest piece of advice is you have to look at your progression and your levels as something that's, it's, you're not going to get um, exponentially better. You're not going to get 1% better every day. Progression's a up and down thing. Like it's, it's sometimes it's going up. Sometimes you plateau, sometimes there's downs, but you have to look at it through a bigger scale and say, as long as I'm Three, 365 days from now, am I a better hockey player? Or am I improving on what I have been? That's the way you have to look at progression. It's not something where you just expected to see progression every day. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, there's going to be plateaus, and you just have to keep pushing forward knowing you're putting in the work and doing the right things. Yeah, that sounds as really great advice. And uh, for the last question I have, if we were to meet and talk to each other after the season, uh, what uh, are you? What is your hopes that you can tell me that you have accomplished together with your teammates now in Innsbruck? I think at the start of the year it was just making playoffs, but after the year now and looking at the season has, like we want to lift that trophy at the end of the year. We we've proven that we're in the top three of the regular season team, and we really want to at the end of the year be the last one atop the mountain standing, no matter who it's against. We know we're going to have to go through some good teams to get there. That's what it is in playoffs. There's going to be, there's, we want to get through that first round. Um, however many games it takes out of seven and, and then just keep building from there. But I think the bit, the thing that I really want to do this year is lift a championship with this group of guys because of how things have went and how, how much we have bonded and how much um, hard work we put into this year. We don't want to see it go to waste and, I think just starting small, winning that first round would be a great goal. But I think the biggest, the big, the dream here is definitely to win a championship with the ACHL. Yeah, that sounds great. And uh, I want to thank you, Jamal Watson, for uh, being a part of uh, this episode of uh, Power Break with Dave.
on Hockey Fever. It have a be, it been a really great pleasure to have you. And I wish you and your teammates all the best for the rest of the seasons. As you uh, are, are you uh, uh, you are prepared for the playoffs, or you, that's that's uh, already. Uh, we have five games left after yeah five games left so five games and then the the real dance starts so yeah uh, we're we're excited and um yeah thanks for having me no I'm glad to always uh do interviews like this and giving advice out to young people and just talking about my career and talking to other people well and just expanding the hockey world that's one of my favorite things I'm glad you gave me a platform for that yeah and I'm as I said really uh, proud and glad that you could be a part and uh, awesome. I wish you all the best. Awesome. Thanks very much. Yeah. And my name is uh, David and this is Hockey Fever and thank you all uh, the viewers that have watched this uh, episode. Hope you enjoyed to watch this. I enjoyed that you uh, are watching and for those of you that don't already subscribe or follow Hockey Fever on social media. Make sure to push the subscribe button so you don't miss, miss out of any episode or anything else that I put out there. And I wish you all a pleasant evening and take care and we see each other on YouTube. Bye bye.